Well, welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to work with discrete point events, which basically occur over time at different locations. So, for example, lightning strikes, accidents, crime locations within a city, etc. So we'll make some points using the Create Random Points tool. So in this case, we'll just take all the defaults from this tool and we'll output a new point feature class called Discrete Event Locations. And I put mine in this GeoDatabase test time. So that will give us 100 points to work with. So next, let's add a date field to our point attribute table. And you can name it whatever you want. I'll name it date field. So next, <clears throat> next we'll use the field calculator to calculate our date as July 1st, 2018, 1200 AM. And then let's select points 10 through 20, and we'll use the date add function. We'll add one hour. So we'll take our old date field and we'll add one hour to it. So now we're at one in the morning. And then we'll repeat the process for every 10 points. So for example, points 21 through 30, we'll make those at 2 in the morning. And points 31 through 40, we'll make that 3 in the morning, so 3 hours. And then keep repeating the process for every 10 points. And let's make the last 30 points, so 71 through 100. Let's select those. And we'll add 10 hours to those 30 points. And I'll change the symbology for my events. So let's just make that some yellow events. So what we want to do is we want to show these events in time. So we've got 100 events and they all have a date time field. So what we can do is if you go to layer properties, we'll have a time tab. So we're going to enable time in this layer. So the field that contains our time is the date field. And then the field format let's calculate the extent of the layer. So it goes from July 1 at 12 a.m. to July 1 at 10 a.m. And let's set our time step interval to one hour. So then we can use this clock as our time slider to animate these events. So they could be lightning strikes, they could be accidents, they could be crime events, etc. So if you see this message, time is disabled, what you would do is go to this clock and just double click on that clock. And that enables clicking on it, disables it, and clicking on it enables it. So now we can display all the events at a certain time. So if we go back, here are all events at 12, 12 a.m. If we go to the next time interval, here's all the events at 1 a.m. Here's all the events at 2 a.m. Here's all the events at 3 a.m., etc. So what we could do is we could display in our ArcMap data frame the time. So to do that, if you go to Options and then Time Display. So we'll display the time in month, day, year, or year, month, day, however you want. And then we'll display our time in hours, minutes, seconds. So we could do it this way. So show time on the map. And then if you go to appearance, you can put a border. And then you can change the symbol so we'll make it bold, italic. 
So now we have the time in our map. So let's zoom out a little bit. So now we could visualize our time using this time slider. We could also animate it. So if we go to time extent, we're going to start at 12 a.m. and we'll end at 10 a.m. And we'll do it for 10 seconds. And then OK. So let's play this animation from the start. So in 10 seconds, it'll go through all these discrete events. So nothing happens during these times. And then at 10 a.m., we get a big burst of events. And then finally, we could save this animation, export it. So export to video. And then you could export it to video as an AVI or as sequential images. So then you could post that to a website or put it on a Microsoft PowerPoint, wherever you want. So that is discrete events where in these 10 seconds, we're going from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., et cetera, on an hour basis showing where these events are occurring.